Good morning, Entropians. Julian McBain here, and today we are on the Jura Plateau. I am working on my curb quest, the bronze uh, curb iron challenge, or hunting challenge bronze curberus. What, what's it called? Is it the hunting challenge bronze curberus? So it's not iron curberus anymore. It's bronze curberus, and I'm at fifty-two thousand to sixty thousand. So we're just gonna continue working on that. While we talk about, it looks like not everything is rendered yet. While we talk about a couple of things, first off, you'll notice that my uh, UI has been set back to default. I decided to give it a shot. I had had it in the same configuration as World of Warcraft. And, uh, geez. I just barely logged on. I'm getting spammed by PMs. Four. Let's see who this is. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to kind of set that aside, and if necessary, I can follow up with them later. I'm actually on a time limit here because I'm. This is a, a, a rare instance of me f uh, doing a recording in the morning because I know I'm not going to have time to do one tonight. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, you'll see that I uh, put everything back to default because I had it in the WoW configuration, and that was that was very instinctive for me because that's you know that used to be my primary game. Well, I haven't played WoW in a while. And I wanted to give the traditional overlay of Entropy a universe, which is honestly an older game, another shot. Not quite sure how I like it yet. Um, I didn't have the UI and the classic Entropy or the default positions for very long before changing them, but I noticed that when you do put everything in default position, things don't tend to overlap very much. So, that's that. Uh, before I get into what I really want to talk about today, please make sure you click the subscribe button down below. I really appreciate everyone's support. It's been great. So just make sure you subscribe. That way you know when I'm posting content, and I appreciate it. Anyway, so what I really wanted to talk about this morning was loot theory. And I know that everyone has a loot theory, how the lootiest code works. And that's what I tend to call the, the way the loot works, because as, as we all know, Ludius is a thing, and he's canon. You know, the god of Entropia universe, and I find it to be quite amusing that uh, the patron god of Entropia universe is the loot algorithm. But I was thinking about it, and, you know, how does... You know, I've, I've been watching, you know, other channels and watching their results with getting loot, profit versus losses, and I was thinking about it, and, you know, I've... I have the feeling, because I know that Mindark goes through great pains to make sure that there is no part of EU that can be considered gambling by any serious stretch, except maybe the, the loot boxes if you purchase them. And even then, you're still getting the, the original value of what you put into it. It's just a matter of what kind of things are you getting for that value. You know, They're, they're going to give you 10 ped worth of stuff when you put 10 pet in it's just what is that 10 pet gonna yield um but anyway i was thinking about the, the loot theory and i know it's an algorithm there, there's all kinds of things involved in the algorithm you know what skill level are you what is your what are your loot skills like reclaiming or uh skinning or scourging, which I find a very interesting term for mute looter, but okay. Um, what are your looter professions? <clears throat> what are the associated skills? Because it's not just those three skills, scourging, uh, skinning, and reclaiming, that constitute your looter skills. Other skills are involved too. And like all professions, and I know professions are really what generate your success rate on loot, um, Mind Arc is very careful to keep the effects of each skill very, very proprietary. So, I have a theory on how they calculate the amount of loot that you get. 
you know, how often you get globals, all of that sort of thing. And so I was going to kind of lay it out for you today, and I want, I'd love to have someone comment. I'd love to have you all comment and let me know what you think of this theory, and, you know, maybe throw your own theories down there. Because, you know, even though I doubt any of us, I mean, unless someone that watches this channel works for Mindark, um, I doubt any of us have an inkling as to how Mindark actually calculates the loot, but it's always fun to kind of tinker with the idea. Consider it a thought experiment. So, first and foremost is the amount of ped that you put into a kill. That's got to be at least part of the core theory. Because in order for it to not be gambling, they need to make sure there's no RNG. So that the, to start off, they need to make sure that, okay, if you're putting 10 pet into a kill, you've got to get 10 pet out of it somehow. And so what I think they do is I think there's a return based on where you're at stats-wise. So like if you let's let's say it takes ten ped to kill a mob and you're low skill, so you might get six ped in loot and four ped in skill back. And I know that it's it you know the the numbers are actually much lower than this, but work with me here because I'm trying to use nice round numbers that are easy to talk about instead of trying to break it down by pack and you know percentages and all that crap. Let's just use ten ped as the standard. You know, I don't know that there's any mobs that aren't in space or are uber level that cost 10 ped to kill. But for the sake of this um, discussion, we're going to use 10 ped as the standard. And then as you skill up, less because, of course, skills are... Geom um, the difficulty of acquiring skills increases geometrically over time. As you skill up, more ped goes into your loot and less ped goes into your skills and then what you get for loot <coughs> is also dependent upon how high your skill level is so let's say you know you're at skill level 50 and so you're under skill level and so 40 percent of your your ped going into the mob goes into skills and the other 60 percent comes back to you as loot and of that 60 percent that comes back to you as loot let's say um you know 80% of that 60%, so let's, let, let's make it easy. Of that 6 ped that comes back to you as loot, let's say 5 ped comes back to you as shrapnel, and you get 1 ped in actual um, stackables. And yes, I know shrapnel, shrapnel is stackable, but I don't consider shrapnel to be loot, I consider it to be recycling. Um, only The only time I ever sell shrapnel is in the event I'm using an unlimited melee weapon that does not use ammo. And as far as I know, there are no unlimited melee weapons that do use ammo, but just for the sake of argument, we'll pretend that there might be or that there, there could be one in the future. Okay, I guess I have to attack this guy behind the tree instead of the guy I have a clear line of sight to, because that makes sense. Um, so, okay. We've got our, our baseline. So... Now, taking that baseline, you know, you put 10 ped into a mob, you got to get 10 ped back. And then you, the, the amount of skill determines your percentage of loot versus skill gain. Okay, fine. And then, whoops, there we go. The weapon you have and the amount of decay the weapon takes puts a modifier on it to make up for part of that cost. And I know I said we just use like a blanket 10 pet as the baseline. Um, it's not, it's of course not that easy because we don't know the actual cost, the amount of decay you take on a weapon, things of that nature. Um, but I'm sure that they have like a baseline. This is what it's supposed to cost to kill this mob. Um, any overkill cost is then added to it. And then, let's see, because we've done baseline cost, skills modifier, loot determination, overkill modifier, weapon decay, armor decay. 
Yeah, they definitely throw armor decay and um, amps and enhancers and all of that decay gets thrown in as part of the cost. Because, you know, especially armor and amp, uh, amp decay, or I should say armor and enhancer decay for armor, uh, is not going to be calculated in the original cost because your evade skill has a, has a large factor on, or your dodge skill if you're fighting robots or other enemies with ranged attacks. It's a large factor on how much decay your armor takes. And most armor doesn't take a huge amount of damage per hit. You know, you might take one peck worth of damage to armor per strike. But at the same time, it's something that they need to make sure they calculate in. And then they they multiply that by probably somewhere between 90 and 95 percent. So 0.9 to 0.95 to come up with your actual loot, because of course Mind Arc has to make money too. And that's that's the loot that you get. And then they of course put it on a you know, they roll on a loot table. That that's probably the closest thing to random you get is um you know, at your skill level, you get X amount of shrapnel and then random loot from a loot table equal to the amount of the, the resultant money. So let's pretend that it's ninety percent, because that's a nice easy number to work with. So out of the probably ten and change call it 11 ped that you put into a mob after decay of weapons and armor and such you get nine ped back of that nine ped or of that that after that 90 percent of the 10 percent mind arc takes i'd say probably five percent goes into a pool and that pool is where the globals you get eventually come from of course there's a minimum for what you can uh, for for mob level in order to get globals and then after you finish with, you know, when you get a global, um, that's when you get the money out of that pool. And maybe even maybe even all of it comes back to you in a global over time if you've got the skill levels. And, of course, in order to get a global, you have to um, have the skills high enough to get globals. You have to have the, the, you know, the weapon type correct for that mob. Um, and then, you know, maybe 1% of it goes into another pool for Hoffs. And then Mind Arc, of course, takes the rest in order to pay the bills and keeps the light, keep the lights on and the servers running, because let's face it, servers are expensive and the electricity it takes is expensive and they've only got a million players and it's, it's technically a free-to-play game. I mean, true, millions of, of dollars, millions of U.S. dollars, millions of tens of millions of ped probably cycle through in transactions in Entropia Universe every single day. Keeping in mind that Mindark makes all of its money off depository fees and auction fees and repairs. Um, and even from what I understand, auction fees... And, and a certain amount of the depository fees don't necessarily go to Mindark directly. If anything, if if anything at all, if there was any sort of RNG involved, it's because it's coming out of a pool of money generated by those fees, not by the amount of money you actually spend hitting mobs. And I mean, if that's not actually costing the players anything extra. You know, if Mind Arc wants to give back to the players, even if it's random to a certain extent, I don't think that would really classify them as a casino. Um, but even then, I'm, I'm not confident that that's the case. I'm not confident that's how they cal you know how they come up with global and off revenue or the money to to pay them out. I think it has something to do with how the player fights and plays and you know. How much how much effort they put into um, how much effort they put into their hunting and things like that. Um, same with mining. Now I'm not really a miner. Uh, if you want to know more about how mining operates, check out Serial Overdrive's channel. I'll make sure to put a link um, or a uh, card at the end of the video. 
Um, he is much more the miner than I am. I'm pretty much a straight hunter. I did enjoy mining when I first started out. I really should get back into it. I've just been, well, frankly, I've been lazy. <laughs> so, um, check him out. But yeah, that's my loot theory. I'd love to hear what your loot theories are. Um, again, I'm I'm fairly confident that minimal to zero RNG is actually involved, except maybe on a timing basis. You know, you're you're guaranteed to eventually get this amount, but when is dependent upon you know some factor. You know, maybe it's 90 to 110 kills. Maybe it's. Um, You know, maybe it's a thousand to five thousand steps. I don't know. They can use anything to come up with that process. The question is, is how does the process work? And of course, Mindark ain't telling us. And there's no reason they should, because if they do tell us, then there's a great way to game the system. You know, you don't hand the cards to the player. No, that's that's a gambling reference. You don't give the keys to a system or the code to a system that you want to remain fair. Because if you give the the code out to everyone, someone's going to understand how to take advantage of everyone else. Because there's always a way. You know, you could have a group of the most honest people out there, someone's going to find an exploit and think that it's okay to exploit it. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm not here to contemplate the ethics of... Um, utilizing system exploits for for fun and profit. I know there are some people who have no problem with it. I personally think, um, especially if it's against terms of service, it's not you know not a good thing to do. But it's just one of those things that you have to really kind of take a look at. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this curb and we're going to start our way back to the base you can see it kind of flashing over in the in the background over here um, I know we're going to have a few more kills on the way there uh, but I'm actually unfortunately running low on time like I said I'm, I'm actually doing this before work which is extremely rare usually I use that time to kind of do self enrichment activities watch videos on on helping me build some skill or another. Lately it's been a lot of Dan Locke. Um, but I've also watched like Jordan Peterson, I've watched Sam Harris, I've watched the Rubin Report. Um, So, today instead I'm recording a video. Nothing wrong with that. This is one thing I've noticed. I've always, I, I've, I've noticed that, and maybe it's just because of the way I tend to, to path around the Jura Plateau. For some reason it appears, whenever I'm on the Jura Plateau, there are always more mobs going back to the base than when I come out from the base. And it might just be the way I'm, I'm passing around, because I tend to take kind of a looping path, and it's not intentional, it's just the way that things always end up happening. Um, but I find it very curious that it's like that. Oh, it looks like we got another player out here. Shout out to... Come on. Oh, another melee player. Shout out to Fury Trones. Hey Fury Trones, if you like this, drop or if you're watching this, drop a comment. So, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm really interested to find out what everyone else thinks of, thinks that the loot theory might be for the game. I know that this is a kind of a an in-depth conversation a lot of people like to have. It's a debate. You know, is there RNG? Is there not RNG? Like I said, I'm not convinced there's any real RNG other than possibly timing. Um, I, I really think it has to do with a very carefully laid out math algorithm. 
so that, you know, Sweden doesn't step in and decide that Mindark has to shut down because they're running an online casino. So, that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe down below. I really appreciate all the support you've given me. You all have a wonderful, wonderful day.